Just wave your hands towards heaven, lift them up towards heaven. Let the Lord know that you love, you love him. Let the Lord know that he's everything. Let the Lord know that nothing matters but him. We are recipients of his grace and his love and his truth. Here we are, Jesus. Here we are, Jesus. Where we are, Jesus. Huh. Yahweh. Yes. Elohim. Sharda. Sharda. manifest himself someone's hands maybe on your right or your left we're going to spend the next two minutes to pray in the holy spirit we're going to spend the next just sing the song in the background as we pray are you ready let's go ahead and pray lift up your voice let's go ahead and pray oh. Pa 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 
de Tobroska. Hallelujah. I'm going to use two scriptures to challenge us to pray. You can drop your hands. One is a prayer of thanksgiving from Psalm 124. We're going to read Psalm 124 from verse 1. Then the other is a prayer of intervention. Psalm 124 verse 1 says, If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, he said, what will Israel say? The simple thing is said, if God did not stay by us, where will we have been? Verse 2 says, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, when they rose up against you in the industry, when they rose up against you at work, when they rose up against you as a nation, verse 3 says, they will have swallowed us cause quick. When their wrath was kindled against us, verse 4, he said, When the waters are of he said, the waters will have overwhelmed us. He said, the streams will have gone over our soul. Verse 5 says, Then the proud waters will have gone over our soul. Verse 6, let's read together. One to go. Blessed be the Lord who had not given us as a prey to their cheat. So that God has not given you as a prey. Lift up your voices and bless his holy name today. Hey! Father, uh, other people may think they are strong, others may think they are smart, others may think they have the connection, but I and my brothers and sisters here, we are humble enough to know that it is you. It is not of him that will it. It's not of him that run it. It's you that sits. Ah, it's you that sits in unapproachable light that showed us mercy. We know that we are not that powerful, but he that keepeth Israel neither sleeps nor slumber. And to the one that keeps us. To the one that keeps us, we have come as a family to return the glory. The waters will have overwhelmed us. They will have washed us out in business. They will have used politics to destroy our lives. But here we are standing by the grace and by the mercy of God. To the keeper of our heads, we say thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. While you're still standing, Mark chapter 23, 
Maybe there's someone that came with something to pray about today. I want to encourage you from the word of God. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 9. Let's read from verse 21. The message translation. Mark chapter 9 verse 21. I want to encourage you to use this to pray. Mark chapter 9 verse 21. Oh wow. I don't know why the choir wants to leave me. But it's okay. I will manage. The Bible says, and this is the case of the boy that was born with a deaf and dumb spirit. He was deaf. The Bible says, and they brought the boy to Jesus. And the father of the boy, and, he, and the, Jesus asked the father of the boy, how long has this sickness been going on with him? And he says, ever since he was a child, many times the sickness will pitch him into fire. And it will pitch him into the river to do away with him, to destroy him. Then the father of the child, he didn't know who Jesus was. He looked at Jesus and says, if he can do anything. You know why he said if? Because they've been everywhere and nothing was done. And some of you have spoken to everybody and nothing has been done. He says, if you can do, if there's a probability that you can do anything. And, and some of you here, maybe that's all you have. You, you don't know if you can, but you just say, Lord, if. And he says, if you can do anything, have a heart. He says, you're a man. Look at this young boy. Have a heart and help us. And I, I wish Jesus Christ said, um, well, I will try. Jesus looked at him with prophetic eyes and looked at him eyeball to eyeball. Verse 23. And what Jesus Christ said. And Jesus said, if there are no ifs amongst believers. He says, anything can what? Happen. Oh, Jesus, let me read it one more time. And Jesus said, If Jesus said, If there is no if here, maybe it's about your child or your marriage. Jesus said, If He said, There are no ifs amongst believers. He said, anything can what happen? Oh, Shaka Balabaya. You have the next two minutes. I don't know where things need to happen, but my God can make it happen. Oh, Lift up your voice body. like a trumpet and pray. Oh, Reke Bekoska Pandi Kavanema Kora. Reke Tokriso Pandi Kavanema Kora. Reke Tokriso Pandi Kavanema Kora. Jesus name we pray. Amen. I know there are few months, there are just few months to the end of the year. But he didn't say, if it's a long time, it can happen. He said, anything can happen. I prophesy that the remaining days of this year, anything and everything will happen. You'll be rolling from impossibilities to possibilities. Your testimonies will be loud and clear. In the name of Jesus. Your face must be loud and clear in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Look here, neighbor, and say, if there are no eaves amongst believers, anything can happen. God bless you, can have your sins. Hello, here. Just as you're going, just be singing with us. Don't sing, sing, sing. I don't know why you stop singing. You know, you know, you know why I love this song? Because throughout this morning, I'm not sure if my wife remembers, that's all I was singing. Just like one hour this morning. I was just singing. You know, I could not even pick, I've heard the song before, but it was today that I picked it up very, very well. Hallelujah. So it was so powerful. Just like, I just felt so connected to it at the moment. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, midweek services start, midweek is holds on Wednesday, but what is starting is the foundation course. The foundation course starts on Wednesday. Praise the Lord. Foundation course starts on Wednesday, so please remember that um, all of you that want to get deeper, this is your turn. 
Let's get deeper. It will be really powerful. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, let's get into the word of God this morning quickly. And um, we, like you know, every October, we started this powerful series last week on marriage and relationships. And we called it Unavailable. And we've been looking at the purpose of marriage. We've been looking at the purpose of marriage, the purpose of relationship. Um, when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is what's inevitable. So the reason why we have a lot of abuse, either with single people, for example, single people have this concept of dating for fun. You know, you ask someone, what are we doing? He said, we're just having fun. Be quick to tell the person, the things they used to have fun at where? King's Way. Things they used to have fun at Lack Way. Things they used to have fun at Disney World. You don't use a human heart to have fun. So you can't be dating for fun. It's such a terrible thing. Every time you want to date, it must be in lieu for marriage. You can't just be dating for marriage. So I say, let's see how it goes. You have no navigation system. Glory to God. If you don't know what you want from the beginning, then we should not be having a conversation. Glory to God. So, and the reason why all of this happens is because there's an abuse. Abuse because people don't understand the purpose of marriage. And let me tell you something. The definition of marriage most of us have is primarily from the people, the families you grew up in. So, I came from a marriage that was not really great because my father was polygamous. I had um, stepmoms. You know, I had stepmoms and, you know, I love all of them. My mom is late. One of my, I think one or two of my, one, one of my stepmom is also late and uh, the two of them left right now. My dad is also late. And it's just terrible because, you know, when you go in a polygamous family, then you make enemies of your brothers and sisters. And I remember that there was a time we had the clash and I told one of my steps, I said, you know why I'm not going to fight anybody? Because I will not fight the battles of my parents. I said, the decision for us to be here was not a decision. It was the work of our parents. So I will not be in that battle. And I'm saying so to you because some of you come from step families and your mother, your father has pitched you against somebody else. If you want to learn politics, be born into a political family. You will see PDP, you will see APC, you will see Labour Party, you will see NNPP. What is going on right now is small. You will see it work out. And it's a very selfish structure. It's a very selfish structure. Because even, you know, and you know the thing about political family, you always think that your father is cheating you until you have a honest conversation with the other part and find that everybody was cheated. The only person that gained was the man. Don't say, well, why is it the Bible that polygamy is a sin? This and this and this, marry too. It's only people that have not come from a polygamous family does not understand that is something you should never do. Is that one of a Bible? Just common sense. You don't have peace of mind. You know, you have a structure where no wife can know everything you have. The principle of political is divide and rule. So we begin to really look at this. We're looking at let's let's go back to our foundational scriptures again. I'm going to read from Psalm 11 verse 3. I don't know if you've seen the comments on social media. I love the comment I saw this morning. They, I think it's already posted. Uh, let me read it to you. <laughs> Very part. And, and the reason why is that if you want to share with your friends, it'll be good at the time. What someone said, Pastor Bo at Pastor Bolaj and Harvesters, this is the most uncomfortable sermon I had to watch my husband. We are both ashamed from watching this sermon. Hopefully, we're going to see marriage as an opportunity to grow. Other person said, thank you for training my orientation about marriage. Very realistic teaching. If you listen to this teaching and nothing strikes you, only God can deliver you directly then. <laughs> you know, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So foundation scriptures, and, and foundation scriptures, Psalm 11 verse 3. Psalm 11 verse 3. Psalm 11 verse 3. The Bible says, let's read one to go. Let's read again, one to go. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Yeah. So let me say this quickly. The definitions of love, marriage that we all have, we practically learned from the family we grew up in. That's it. We practically learned from what? The family we grew up in. So most of the time, you are reproducing the family you were in. And the reason why you have to know that is that 
Some things are great about your family, but not all things were great. So before you reproduce the errors of your parents and the family you grew up in, ask yourself, how can I be intentional about fixing this and doing this differently? So let's step another scripture. First Corinthians chapter 7. I don't want to leave the foundation here. And we're going to jump into it. First Corinthians chapter 7 verse 8. First Corinthians and the boxes need to be closed by. First Corinthians chapter 7 verse 8. The Bible says, this is Paul talking about the issue of marriage. And Paul says this, I, I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good if they abide even as I am. And this is wonderful because sometimes society makes it feel as if if you're not married, you have some kind of cancer. That's not what the Bible says. As, far as, we, as, as much as I know, my master and the Savior Jesus Christ was never married and it was not a failure. So you cannot use the, you cannot use the presence of marriage the absence of marriage, divorce or not divorce, to judge if someone is successful or not. Or else Jesus would have been the typical failure because he died at almost 34 years old and he was not married. And some of you, you need to be set free by that. You need to be set free by that. Glory to God. So, as we talk about the foundations of marriage, one of the things I wanted to see is this. I wanted to see something. That one of the things... Wow. I'm just... The life you experience is not the life you have. It's the life you focus on. So, and focus in life, there are two things that drive us to behave, to make a decision. It's either pleasure or pain. Two things. It's either what? Pleasure. So when you're making the decision, it's either because it's pleasurable or because you are trying to avoid pain. So let's take something. So why do you eat certain kind of food? Why? Because it's what? Pleasurable. Yes or no? Why don't you eat that kind of food? Because it's what? Because it's pain. Some of you don't like healthy food because to you, it's painful to eat those food. The same thing. You know, the things you spend money for, you spend money to avoid pain. That's why you didn't walk to church. That's why you drove to church or you Ubered to church. Because you try to... Human beings are wired to make decisions based on trying to have pleasure or trying to avoid pain. So how does this come into marriage? The question is that this next thing. So you, the fundamental thing. My decisions are made based on my based on pain or pleasure. So when I see myself gravitating towards a decision, I'm either trying to get pleasure or avoid pain. Let me tell you the people that master the people that sell cigarette. Cigarette is nothing. But you know how they sell it? They sell it as if smoking something that can destroy your liver will give you ultimate what? Pleasure. So people, so the first thing they do is that they smell cigarette with a swag. Everybody that smokes smokes with a swag. So when I was a child, the way to know if you're a big boy was that you could smoke. Did you go through that test? Yes. And they're like, you know, and, and because if you see how they say, Rotman's London king size. Like what is king size about that stick? Is that the king's finger or something? There's nothing, it's just an image. But the reason why they know it's pure poison, but it's pure poison, but they know that if we can kind of make people think it's pleasure, they will buy it. The same thing with cocaine. Everybody knows cocaine is destructive. Why do people do cocaine? Because cocaine gives you what? Instant pleasure. That's why they do cocaine. Why can't you do cocaine? Because of instant pain. Because of like, eh? cocaine do you see you know because in my head i'm like i will lose my money i will become an addict then lose my marriage then misbehave then start selling things to buy drugs but the reason why people choose what so a lot of us here that are saying that you know when it comes to marriage you know i don't like marriage the reason why is that over time and this is what it is You've consistently linked relationship and marriage to pain. So, subconsciously, you find yourself going away from it. And some of you that really want to have marriage, 
It's because over time, and all of you that have good marriages, it's because over time you've consistently linked your relationship and marriage to pleasure. The difficult thing is this, and this way it's very tricky. You can link one thing, this one thing, to both pain and what? Pleasure. When you do that, what do you think wins? Pain. Because your drive to, your drive to avoid pain is stronger than your drive to enjoy pleasure. So, some of you that are single here, the reason why you're not married is this. You have what I call mixed association. You've mixed relationship as pain and what pleasure. And because your mind wants to keep you safe, it keeps taking you away from men, taking you away from all of those things. And that's why, because when you see men, your mind says pain. When you see men, pain. When the guy comes, pain. When the girl comes, pain. You see pain. And you're, 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 you just want yourself to step out of it. Glory to God. I know that sounds like you, doesn't it? So let me show you some things we've labeled marriage and relationship as. Can you come? Yeah. yeah. Give, it, give one to her. Give one to her. Let her bring it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, bring one. Yeah. Give one to her too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's complete now. Yeah. That's fine. This one. Yeah. So this is marriage. What have you linked marriage to? Heartbreak. Hey, who put this label here? That's what. Some people are here. All they've linked relationship to is what? Heartbreak. This is what it is. This is, when you say relationship, when you say marriage, this is what it is. In fact, some people didn't come to church today because they don't want to hear about relationship and marriage because it's not as if the pastor will talk to them, but it reminds them of heart pain. You know what is powerful about this? Let me hold on to this. What is powerful is this. Let, let, me, let me do a little, a little test. Let me do a little test. I, I want to look for someone that um, I really love. Yeah. That's good. Are they first stand up? Yeah. Look for everybody around you that is wearing red and count how many you can find. Just count as much as possible. Can you give me a microphone if you can? If you can't, it's okay. As much as possible. Okay, tell me, how many do you count? Ten. Great. How many people are wearing brown next to you or around you? No, don't look, don't look, don't look. You've read the test already. What? How many? How many? How many are there? Zero or... Did you, you don't... Zero. The lady next to you, what's she wearing? Look to your, look to your left. Brown. But you just told me, see, what were you looking for? People that are wearing what? Red. People that are wearing red are very far. He saw red behind, red in front, red everywhere. He didn't see the brown. Even me, I'm wearing brown. <laughs> me, I'm talking to him. I'm wearing brown. And yet, he didn't see the brown. The reason why is that you only see what you focus on. Him that how many people are wearing brown? The lady next to me is wearing brown, I'm wearing brown, and he didn't see us at all. Why am I saying this to you? If you branded marriage as heartbreak, that's what you will see. That's what you will see in your marriage. It could be 90% no trouble and 10% of heartbreaking experience. You will forget the 90% of no trouble. You will continually focus on what? On the 10% heartbreak. And you say, this is how my whole marriage is. That's not how your whole marriage is, sir. It's just your focus because your perspective is what? Heartbreak. Because you find what you look for. The Bible says, whatsoever you seek, you will find. So look at him. He was busy looking for red everywhere. And meanwhile, brown was right in front of him. And I said, how many people are wearing brown? And he said, no one. And the person asking the question was wearing what? Brown. Could it be that your marriage is not that bad? It's just what you choose to focus on. Could it be that women are not that bad? It's just what you choose to focus on. Could it be that your wife is not that bad? It's just what you choose to focus on. Could it be that your husband is not that bad? It's just what you choose to focus on. So some of you are focused and say, thank you, sir. I say marriage is heartbreak. What else is marriage? What else is marriage? Marriage is what? 
I can feel it. If, if this means something to you, raise up your hands. If it means something. Wait, 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 wait. Let me, don't lie in church. Don't lie in church. You see some people laughing. <laughs> ha. So, listen to me. This means that marriage is prison. What does that mean? Naturally, you're, you will keep yourself away from prison. This is the reason why if you're not married, you will find it hard to get to a relationship. And if you're married, you'll be looking for how to get out. Do you know what? The things that mar happy marriages experience and they go, oh, I enjoy it. Same things unhappy couples experience and they say this is lack of freedom. Because in a loving marriage, the wife will say, where are you? Are you coming back soon? He said, oh, baby, I'm, I'm on my way. I stopped at this and this and this. I will stop here maybe next two hours. He will call again and say, baby, yes, I was going to call you back to let you know that, you know, I'm stopped here. In an happy marriage, why are you monitoring me? <laughs> what exactly is it? The, the reason why is that the same thing are happening, but you are looking for, someone is seeing the love in the call. You are seeing the bondage in the call. Are you here? And I'm saying so because what we learnt it as we were growing. Let's see some more. What have you defined as marriage? Aha. Uh -huh. Bills. If you identify with this one, raise up your hands. No, just be honest. Raise up your hands. As a matter of fact, almost all the single men I know don't want to marry because of this. Why are you not married? I'm looking for more money. I need to make more money. Because of bills. And, and, and so every time you think of marriage, you always think of bills. And like I told you, you will never see, and let me tell you something, some of you never get to reach until you get married. It, it's not a curse. Let me tell you the reason why. Marriage makes you disciplined. Those that marry know what I'm talking about. When you marry, you start saving more. When you're single, the way the money goes, you don't even know what to do with it. There are many of you that are single. You earn a lot of money. You just poor. It's gone. But when you're married, all of a sudden, you will learn, you learn savings. You will learn accountability. That's why you will notice a man that a, a, single, a, a married man with the same income as a single person, the married man does more with his money than a single person. Glory to God. Let's take another one. This one is what? Married means what? How many identify with that? Let's be honest. Don't lie in church. That's complex. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. I've seen two people in front of me. Wait. Marriage means unhappiness. I want to ask you, if marriage was unhappiness to you, how do you think you will ever be happy? So, this is it. If your marriage is, no marriage is 100%. If your marriage is 80% happy and 20% unhappy, you will find yourself focusing on the happiness. I mean, I've had people complain about the most ridiculous things in marriage. I've had people complain that the problem they have with their husband is that they cannot dress. I said, ah, ah, that's the problem you have with your husband. He can't dress. So when people are praying for this problem, that if their husband can just be faithful, responsible, provide, your own husband is faithful, responsible, spiritual, provide, all he has is that he cannot dress. One man came to see me some other time and he had married some from the choir. And he said, Pastor, the problem with my wife, she likes too much sex. I, because I knew her, I didn't know. She can't, I know her, she, even my dad has a virgin. He said, Pastor, I'm very serious. We have sex every single day. I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, if I travel for two days, my wife will call me and say, you have gone two days, oh. You have gone two days, oh. You have missed two rounds, oh. Don't come back now and say you do one time. Oh. One, two, three. Oh. Two plus one is what? Three. Oh. You know, as I'm saying this, so my men are here saying that, where is she? Can I remarry? Where is she? Can I remarry? So I'm only saying so because what you focus on. And when I looked at the guy, I said, your problem is a lot of men's prayer points. They are just praying, give me this mountain. Praise God. And I'm saying that you would be looking, you'll be looking for the unhappy. And you will not realize that 
The unhappiness is not all over your marriage. You are just the one that is looking for that unhappiness. And the fifth thing is what? Lack of independence. And you know, for some people, should I tell you how it is? This is how it is for you. Come. You are one person. No, put it, put it like this. You are one person. And everything is stacked on each other. Yeah, this is how some people are. Everything is stacked. Question, how will you be married? How will you stay married? And, you know, and, and you know wh- wh- where's the guitarist? And it's very powerful. So, this is what happens. This is what happens. And I want to say this because I noticed that in October, marriages in our church always improves. Then by December, it begins to shake. And I was... And I knew the reason why. And the reason why is this. So this guy plays the bass guitar. The guitar, um, what? Bass guitar. Bass guitar. The big guy use, use, what was this? Strings. strings. Yeah, strings. The thing with the strings is that every time you pick up in the morning, what do you have to do to the strings? To tune. You have to what? Tune. tune it. Why do you have to tune it? So it doesn't sound disturbed. The reason why is that between the last time it played and now, the strings have a tendency to what? Relax. So, every morning he has to tune it. All this teach, when you come on Sunday, I'm tuning you. But the problem is that when the teaching is over, you need to learn to tune yourself. Because you must remember that this string, which is you, you thought about marriage like this for the past 30 years. You thought about marriage like this for the past 50 years. You've been like this for a long time. One teaching cannot change you. You need to go back every morning and what? Find a way to tune yourself. This is what you have to do for yourself. In church, we have miracles, not magic. So the teaching is one tuning. The reason I'm saying so is that if this thing blessed you, you need to mark the message and go back to YouTube. And hear it over a period. And change your behavior because you have to go and tune it. This morning you tuned. Yes, sir. The next time you get it, you will you tune. Because the strings are just going to go bad by itself. You'll find yourself going back to old behavior. You know, and that's why when you're in a healthy marriage, your husband will apologize about certain things. Your wife will apologize about certain things. And they'll do it again. You know why? Because it's natural for them to go back to the default mode. But what you have to do is to what? Tune again. And I'm saying so because in this teaching, whatever you learn, you have to tune again. You're going to hear, I mean, last week was so powerful. You hear some of the comments. But I'm a pastor and I'm realistic. I'm I'm talking about the key to lasting change. The key to lasting change is tuning. You must come to what what I call conditioning. You, You recondition yourself. You recondition because all your life you thought about relationship as unhappiness. You thought about lack of independence. One message will not change it. You are going to recondition yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Because I came from a challenging marriage, you know, my, my, wife's, my, my wife's family, their marriage is more healthy than the family, than my own family. Because I came from a challenging marriage, I didn't know what it was when I was young, about 25. I was praying and I was praying about my marriage, maybe 24, 25. I was just saying, Lord, you know, sometimes God tells you something, you don't even know what it makes sense like. And I said, Lord, I want to have a successful marriage. And God told me about someone that was like a mentor to me. And God literally told me, said, go and live with him and his wife. Not because I needed a place to stay. I didn't know why God told me to live there. Looking back, God was trying to model in front of me what it means. To have a happy marriage. The first shock, it was like shock. The lady was a manager in the bank. He was like a GM in the bank. One Saturday I was in their house and they were playing. And the wife said, I'm going to make my hair. And I said, okay. And she counted money and gave to him to give to her to make her hair. I said, uh-uh, for what? He said, she's going to make her hair. I was shocked. The reason why is that in my entire life, till, I, till my parents died, I never saw my father give my mother money. I never saw my father either to cook or to do. I never saw it. And the reason why is that some of you, the problem with your marriage is default. You learn to bad thing by default. You know, for example, there are men here that your father did not pay school fees. And you're growing up struggling to pay your children's school fees. But your wife is angry. Your wife needs to be angry, but she needs to back up and be like, 
this guy was not born knowing this. And there's something very sad. I, I, some, I, I have a confession. It's sad for my family. I, among my siblings, a lot of them are separated and divorced. And when I look at them, it's not really their fault. It's the setting that we came from. Because that setting must lead to certain divorce and separation. Some of you are experiencing marital delay, separation and divorce, and you think it's Satan. It's not Satan. It's your default setting. Someone cannot behave the way you behave and they'll be happily married. Someone cannot behave the way you behave and they'll be dating. No. Foul. Error. Praise God. I said praise God. Are you here? Let's begin to close. So we're talking about the purpose of marriage. Genesis chapter 2 verse 20. I'm, I'm just going to rush through about two or three of them. Two or three of them. You heard about 2 verse 20. So I was like, ah, is it not, is it, have we finished like that? I know that's how the sermon is. What is really getting powerful, then we have to close. So that you can watch the rest online. Genesis chapter 2 verse 20. And I'm saying so because a lot of us just have to, a lot of us, some of you, your parents lived together, but it was hell. You didn't come from a good marriage, though. Because living together does not mean that you had a great marriage. So what is the purpose of marriage? And, and it's two ways. For all of us that are married, when you look at the purpose of marriage, you can call yourselves, your husband and wife, you can come together and be like, uh, honey, why are we getting here? How can we improve on purpose one? Then all of you that are single, you know that those that are married are bought material already. You know husband material, wife material. Those that are married have already bought material. So it's how to adjust the material to what they have. But all of you that are not married, you have not bought material yet. So before you buy material, you will now begin to look, does this material fit its purpose? Apple chain cannot be used to make suits. Some kind of men cannot become husband. It's not in them. Some kind of girls cannot become wife. They don't have it. Except they make significant changes. But some of you, some of you, some of you feel as if you are assistant to the ghost. I can change him. <laughs> hey, babao. <laughs> babao, 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 babao. If you can change him, I have some jobs for you. I want to let me change our, our CBN governor to make dollar, 100 naira to one dollar. Because no one can change anybody. Can you change yourself? Ordinary you cannot change. You say you change somebody. <laughs> Praise God. What's the purpose of my Genesis chapter 2 verse 20. Let, let's look at it from the beginning. The Bible says, And God and Adam gave all names to all cattle and to the fowls of the air and to every beast of the field. Look at the Bible says. The Bible says, And for Adam there was not found a help meet for him. He didn't say there was not found a friend. He didn't say there was not found a playmate. A help meet. Meet means suitable for him. So say, ah, that means so that I can play with him. A dog can play better than a woman, wife. That's a dog can play. If you have a dog that's a friend that's playful, a dolphin can play more. A parrot can talk more. But when he says it helps people, he said there was no found support. Support that could match the level of his own need. And one of the things I said this last week, you have to backtrack to this. I don't want to go back to it. Is that God created us for support. What is support? That I know that if I'm down and out, someone can carry me. And God wanted that thing in a, in a union that is marriage. And if you are very honest, a lot of you here, you are looking for support. I'm telling you, support is that your wife is struggling to have a child and you can stand beside her and not stand against her. That is what marriage is. That's marriage. Support. Support is that your husband needs money for business. And doesn't know what to do. You say, honey, give me seven days. I will do everything legitimately right within my power to bring you the money. Support is finding a place where someone can hold your hands. Not just in shouting times. 
in down times. And every human being is looking for that kind of relationship. And if you're married, you need to ask yourself, how are we working on the support factor of marriage? And if you're single, you need to ask yourself, will he be supportive? Does she show the sign of support? The second thing, the second thing marriage does, because, because I just want to jump into it. I just want to jump into it. You know, I just want to jump into it. So some people say that, well, you know, we can just have open relationship. Open relationship can never guarantee support. At the level at which I'm talking about. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Everyone, and let me tell you what support means. Everyone needs someone to cry and laugh with. That's what support means. Let me tell you something. This, <laughs> I don't know if you understand this. Your happiness will be very painful if you have no one to laugh with when something big happens to you. That's why they post on social media. There's nobody to laugh with. So when they buy a car, they have to post it. Because there's nobody to laugh with. People that say, hey, yeah, oh, wow, yeah, big car, yeah, big guy, yeah. See, when you're to, see, the thing about people that laugh on social media, they cannot, that's why sometimes when you share with someone, you say, ah, you're not happy for me. They're happy. But they've not connected to you in such a way that they can show the level of joy you're expecting. That's why when you tell your mother news or you tell your wife or your husband news, it's different from telling a friend because he knows where you came from. He knows what you experienced. He knows what you went through. So when the joy comes, like, oh, oh, oh. But when you tell your friend, ah, I, I finished my master's. Ah, that's good. Oh, oh smart girl. Ah. But the person that knows your story say, hey, you that came from a crew village that you were carrying Koroba on your head. Hey, your mother will roll on the floor because the connection is there. The second thing marriage does, which is very important, is this. I'm just going to jump. I'm just going to jump to the last one, verse 24, because of time. Verse 24. Verse 24. Genesis, let's read together. I want to go. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother. That's what I'm going to. Therefore shall what? Marriage is not for boys, it's for men. He said, therefore shall a man, not a boy. So if he's a boy, he's not qualified. If he cannot leave his mother's apron, he's not qualified. If he lives in his parents' house, he's not qualified. He said, therefore shall a man. The reason why is that marriage is designed for you to grow. Can I be honest with you? What your mother finished, your wife will continue. What your father couldn't do, your husband will continue. God bless you, my brother. God, God, that, 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 that. <laughs> Since I married my wife, I grew. I what? I grew. My wife tells me how to brush my teeth and make sure the toothpaste does not. What they've been telling me since that I did not hear. He said, don't. So my wife, the recently she was telling me, say, you use the toilet and the urine spews on the seat. <laughs> As she was talking, he said, I'm beginning to sound like your sister, right? <laughs> I'm going to sound like your sister, right? Praise God. What she has not agreed since her dad was telling her, me, I'm not the new thing to grow. The reason why is that all the, some people that are running, running to divorce, they are just losing the opportunity to grow. Praise God. Some of you, you, you date John. Dead Victor, all the single people, listen to me. Until you reach cut off mark and jam, 240. You can't get there. So you'll be dating around until you reach cut off mark. Until you reach cut off mark, you can't get there. So this one, you, no, no, it's the guy. You jump on it. You jump on you, you must reach what? Cut off mark. Because marriage was designed for you to grow. The question is that in your relationship, are you growing? In your marriage, are you growing? Are you running away from growth? So my wife has challenged me with my timing. Really, ch- because she's very good at that. She's challenged me with that. When, when, when I just got married, my color combination was horrible. You didn't know how horrible it was. So my wife would just say, um, my wife would say, when you want to dress, what do you have in mind? 
It's a very good question. He said, what do you have in mind? That's, you know, it's a very technical question. <laughs> it can be an insult, but it's a question also. <laughs> but I said, what do you have? He said, I said, what do you mean? He said, what do you see yourself in your mind? Like in your mind? Because, <laughs> and what she was saying was that, all these things, how does it combine? How does it work out? So at some point in my marriage, I said, please just pick the clothes. Put on the bed, I will wear <laughs> Then at some point, I will wear and ask her, hmm? I, I was growing. Now, I just wear and move on. Because what? I have what? Grown. But if I didn't submit to growing, I will still be dressing like someone that they are attacking spiritually with colors. And some of you, the reason why you have not improved is that you have not allowed your mind, it wants to grow the way you talk. Your tongue is too sharp. <laughs> Praise God. Some of you, your tongue is too sharp. I would say that. So, so marriage needs to calm me down, tame it. Some of you, marriage will grow your spending. You would, you will limit because everything you buy, pa, you buy, pa, 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 pa. When you become married, you know, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> but the thing is that instead of you to grow, you might not be complaining. My husband is too stingy. My girlfriend spends a lot. This and this and this and this and this. He talks a lot. He talks a lot. My brother, grow. My sister, grow. Stop running from away from growth opportunities. You are not meant to divorce. You are not meant to break up. You are meant to what? Grow. All of you that are honest here, you look back at the relationship you broke up with and you're like, why did I break off? You know why you're saying that? Because now you have what? Grown. The prayer is this, that God will give you the grace. It says, therefore shall a man. It's meant to grow you. Grow your patience. Grow your temperance. Grow your gentleness. That's why sometimes marriage will kill you first because before it gives you life. You will die first. My pastor told me, he said, only dead men succeed in marriage. You will die first. Your, your husband comes and bring me food. <laughs> you bring the food. Your food is here. You are growing. When you have grown, when you say, bring me food, you've mastered it. Oh, what do you want? Should I pound or do this and this? Because now you have grown. <laughs> you've grown. Because when you've grown, what used to shake you? That's why some of you, when you thought your mom, your, you say, ah, my, mom, my mom can't take anything. Now you understand that it was wisdom. Praise God. Let it what? Grow you. Stop running away. Single people, stop running. I'm not saying that stay in the relationship let them abuse you. That's what I'm saying. You're single. So know the difference between growth and abuse. But let it grow you. Because the lesson you don't learn today, you will learn somewhere else. So Kokma, stay somewhere and learn the lesson. Praise God. Let us pray. Stand on your feet. Let us pray. Father, grant me the grace. Grant me the grace to stay in school. <laughs> Lord, grant me the grace to stay in school. I know it's killing me, but grant me the grace to stay in school. Lord, grant me the grace to stay. 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 I know I need to make adjustment. Grant me the grace to stay. And Father, we want to thank you for this powerful teaching. And I'm praying that you will change our mindset and change our lives. And let it be healing and deliverance to everyone that is just struggling today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Remember, after today, go back to YouTube and what? Tune. Because as you are here now, someone say, ah, I don't know what to do. By Tuesdays are falling off. Wake up and what? Tune. When your husband is behaving, say, honey, let's watch that video again. So that you can what? Tune. Tell your boyfriend, let's go to a YouTube video and watch again. So that you can what? Tune. God bless you. You can have your seat. <laughs>